The Hulk's gamma radiation is so intense that it could not only give a person cancer, but what I can only define as super cancer. In the early 2003 film, where we see Bruce Banner absorb the gamma radiation that initially transformed him into the Hulk, we see him take on what was shown to be a radiation dose of around 8,500 rads or 85 gray. Gray and rads being the standard units to designate how much radiation someone absorbs. And 85 is a pretty significant number, seeing how it only takes an estimated 4 to 6 gray to outright kill 50% of exposed individuals within just a few weeks, usually via a horrible process called acute radiation syndrome, where after a brief exposure, individuals will immediately experience severe levels of inflammation as their body and blood vessels hemorrhage out their blood and their cells mutate so much on such a large scale as to cause widespread cell necrosis, which is a fancy way of saying cell death. For anyone who experiences lower doses of radiation, such as in the hundreds of rads, which is still a lot by the way, they are likely to still experience acute radiation syndrome. They just have a much higher chance of surviving in the short term. And even if you don't die, the radiation you experience, whether it's from the nuclear fallout of an atomic bomb, nuclear power, plant, or in this case a Hulk, you're likely to remain quite sick for weeks to months to possibly years to come, with the radiation messing up your immune system, intestines, bones, and brain. You might get infections, feel nauseous, throw up a lot, and be really tired all the time. And if you don't eventually die from the multitude of awful things we've listed so far, there's one other major thing that can do it. Cancer. And just not any cancer. For anyone blasted by by some Hulk radiation, even at low doses, there is always the risk that you will eventually develop radiation-induced cancer. To give you the rundown, cancer is basically a disease of uncontrolled cell growth and proliferation, often resulting from mutations in key genes that regulate checkpoints in the cell cycle. Checkpoints that often serve to tell an unhealthy cell to commit apoptosis or basically self-destruct. Cancer cells also remain immature, as in and they don't mature to carry out a specific job for the body. And if enough of these cancer cells build up, they will form a clump or tumor, growing their own blood vessels to take up resources, avoiding the immune system. They can secrete a substance to tell other healthy cells in the body to move out of the way. They can even make enzymes via their own white blood cells to break down other healthy tissues and blood vessels that lie in their path. But as researchers found out, cancer caused by radiation specifically can be much worse. Worse as in victims often develop leukemia in their bone marrow and blood forming tissues, then thyroid cancer, lung cancer, skin cancer, often forming solid tumors in their intestines and brain. But that's not even the worst of it. What's actually worse about gamma radiation induced cancer is it's these types of cancer that are far more aggressive in how quickly they grow and invade other parts of the body. Any forming cancer now finds itself in a tumor microenvironment because the host's entire body was mutated. So how bad is the cancer the Hulk would give you? How much gamma radiation is this guy given off? For instances in the past where the Hulk gets so angry that he literally glows green, other than me saying that you should just run as fast as you can and it's probably not fast enough to give you a number, for something or someone like the Hulk to glow from gamma radiation would mean that at any moment he is releasing radiation at the levels of several hundred rads to likely several thousand rads every minute. Stay around for any significant amount of time more than a minute long, like an hour long hangout and you would mutate into a pile of goo. But even if you successfully run miles away, the Hulk is likely to give you a technical super cancer. Super cancer that has been theorized to be so much worse because it has something in droves that regular cancer is thought to have just a lot less of, known as the stem cell hypothesis. Imagine, if you will, that radiation exposure created a special type of cancer cell called cancer stem cells, or CSCs. These cells act like the bosses of the tumor. They are the ones driving its growth, making it harder to treat, and help it resist almost any type of therapy you could throw at it. These CSCs are really tough 
cookies. They have superpowers that regular cancer cells don't. For instance, they are terrifyingly good at literally fixing their damaged DNA. They are zombies that can heal. They can also make copies of themselves endlessly, which helps the tumor keep growing as it takes damage. And because of their added superpowers, CSCs stick around even after radiation treatment kills off the surrounding cancer cells. And because they're still there, they can make the tumor come back even stronger than before. They are the reason why tumors caused by radiation exposure can be so aggressive and so frustrating to treat. So should you and the others stay away from the Hulk at all costs? Well, no. This is not what makes the Hulk so deadly and terrifying for anyone that decides to get close to him. You see, in the recent MCU films, the Hulk never actually glows green like in the days of old, meaning that he does not release gamma radiation, at least at levels that could harm a curious Black Widow. In fact, whatever radiation he does release isn't any more harmful than the radiation we all are experiencing on a daily basis from space, your phone, or even the food you eat. Hulk is harmless, or at least the only thing he might emit is a strong body odor. No, the real threat that any member of the team would want to avoid is Hulk's blood. Perhaps the hardest part of writing these episodes is translating some very wordy science papers into something that actually makes sense. In nearly every iteration of the character, and especially the MCU, Bruce Banner knows that his blood is dangerous, that it's highly radioactive. In the series She-Hulk, Bruce explains to his cousin that after she comes in contact with his blood and turns into yet another Hulk, that their family specifically possesses a rare genetic trait that allows their cells to metabolize gamma radiation instead of being overwhelmed and mutated by it. So if anyone else was exposed to his blood, like Captain America or Natasha, getting an 8500 rad dose thrown into their eye or mouth during a battle, they would quickly develop acute radiation syndrome, super cancer, and possibly die not too soon after, right? Well, for most people, yes but not for everyone. While most individuals will die from this, Bruce also realizes that his blood is so much more than just a deadly poison. Cause much like his cousin and family members, he finds out that they aren't the only individuals on Earth whose families possess some sort of genetic mutation that causes them to change. As we see other individuals like Emil Blonsky also change into monsters like the Abomination, or as the MCU hinted at, and likely to make an appearance in the future is villains like the leader. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. Like Wolverine, the Hulk's mutation has given him regenerative healing, allowing him to regrow lost body parts. With us going over the really cool biology of how Wolverine's claws work in this video right here. Cause learning is awesome. See you in the next one.